Today, I want to share with you my experience so far using path tracing for metahumans inside Unreal Engine 5. To begin, I'm going to create a new project and I'm going to enable ray tracing. I'm going to use the blank project. For plugins, I'm going to search for denoise and I'm going to enable the optics denoiser and disable the open image denoiser. For this project, I'll be using the MetaHuman Lighting project. I just copied the assets from this project over. I'm going to import a MetaHuman into my project. And here we are with the scene. This particular scene, by the way, is this one here, the Red Lantern Ray Tracing map. Okay, so let's drag the MetaHuman in. And I'm going to zero out. Let's open up the blueprint and we'll set up the LOD sync first. I'm going to set the number of LODs to one and force LOD zero and compile. Next, I'm going to open up a camera and position it. There's nothing special about this camera. I'm just going to use 50 millimeters and around 2.8 for the aperture. Okay, so I'm going to edit the pose process. Now, if you don't have one, obviously you can load it in through visual effects. Search for path tracing. And I'm going to set my samples to 200 for now. So while I'm working on the project, it renders quite quickly. And I've enabled the denoiser here. The first time you do this, it may take a while to prepare the shaders. And this is what we have so far. Go to the project settings. I'm going to make some changes here. First, I'm going to disable texture streaming. Next, I need to scroll down and find a rendering section. I'm going to change dynamic global illumination method to screen space beta and reflection method to screen space. These are just my personal choices. You may want to play around with these values. I'm also going to set shadow map method to shadow maps and choose ray trace shadows. Okay, so this is what we have so far. Obviously, the first thing we're going to need to tackle is the eyes. So let's open up the MetaHuman. Go to Face, and in the Details panel, under Materials, find Eye Occlusion. Here it is. What we need to do is open up the Parent Material. So if we scroll down, and here it is, M Eye Occlusion. Okay, so we're going to need to make some changes here. The first thing I'm going to do is right-click and search for Path Tracing. And we want this path tracing quality switch. Then I'm going to detach this scalar value here. And instead, I'm going to connect it to the normal input. And then I'm going to take the output and place it into the default. Then I'm going to create another scalar value, but I'm going to convert this to a parameter. And I'm going to give it a name. Path Tracing Opacity. I'm going to set the default value for around 0.4. Uh, max of 1. And then I'm going to set the group to a new group called Path Tracing. Connect this parameter now to Path Traced. And we can hit Save. I'm going to now comment this section just to clean things up. And now if we go over to our material instance, we'll see under path tracing, we have this new path tracing opacity. And if we play with that, as you can see, the eyes are no longer black. Fantastic. Right, what I want to do next is fix the beard and I'm going to come here to Hair, Ray Tracing, Radius Scale. 
And I'm going to play with this value until I get the result I want with path, path tracing enabled. But as we can see, the beard now reappears. From metahuman to metahuman, this value will probably be different. I'm going to repeat this for the eyelashes. Just adjust the hair ray tracing radius. There we go. Uh, the moustache and the eyebrows. I will do the same. And the hair. Okay, as we can see, uh, the hair is all blurry. It's not working with depth of field. So what I'm going to do is select my camera, search for path tracing. And here are all the values. I'm going to choose this reference depth of field. And I'm going to click true. And enable it. And as you can see, the hair has now reappeared. I'm going to adjust the normals of the face material because with the denoiser switched on, the skin is rather smooth. As you can see, it's still smooth. So I'm going to disable the denoiser. But you may want to continue with the denoiser. Maybe you want that smooth effect. Okay, so because I've covered this in other tutorials on my channel, I'm going to speed up this bit. What I'm doing is creating a sequencer, posing the character, and then setting up the camera. Now it's time to render out the image using Movie Render Cube. What I'm going to do is load the Still Ultra preset. And here we have deferred rendering. I want to replace this with path tracer. And in anti-aliasing, I'm going to choose for sample count 1000. This is probably not enough, but this is what I'm going to do for this. And one in temporal count. Override the anti-aliasing and set to none. And then I'm not going to change anything else. Here in the output section, you could choose your output directory. Uh, output resolution and frames, etc. But I'm going to leave it at the default and hit accept. I'm going to render local and I can't record beyond this point. Now, before we end, please remember to like and subscribe. It helps with the algorithm. If you want to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com. Alternatively, you can click the thanks button underneath this video and help that way. Okay, so. If you've got any questions, leave them below and I will answer them if possible. I will see you in the next one.